Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today is Tip Tuesday and recently on my Instagram stories I asked for some help from you guys, what you guys wanted to see for Tip Tuesdays and overwhelmingly you guys asked for tips about using pattern paper in your Bible journaling, using fabric and using a uh, sewing machine or stitching. So those are going to be the upcoming Tip Tuesdays. Today we're going to talk all about pattern paper and I never really thought about doing a Tip Tuesday on this just because I incorporate it into my process videos and things like that and thought that, that would give you some ideas but hopefully this will give you one resource with a variety of different ideas and tools and tips and tricks and all that goodness all in one place for you guys. I also curated a playlist of several process videos I've used or done um, using pattern paper so I'll link that playlist down below um, and that will include some of the bible pages that I'm going to show you today. So I'll show you some examples in a few minutes. I'm not going to be showing you necessarily techniques in this video. I'm going to be giving you an example examples, some tips and tricks about picking out papers, and then some different tools that are helpful when using pattern papers. So what I have here are a variety of examples of pattern paper. I'm sure a lot of us know what pattern paper is, um, but I want to kind of steer you towards what to avoid and what to reach for. So first off here, what I have is a little paper pad from um, Hobby Lobby. This is the Paper Studio brand, and this is going to be the ones that I kind of tell you to avoid. <laughs> I know this is seems like it's a really cost effective pattern paper to grab. Um, you can see this pad here is $8.99. Use a coupon. You can get it for like $4.50, $6, something like that. Um, and it has a lot of paper. However, the quality of this paper is not great. It's very, very thin. And while yes, you get a lot of variety in patterns and things like that, um, it can be a little bit tricky to use just because it is so thin. So I find myself having to double it up for things like tip-ins and things like that. Um, it it die cuts okay, but it's very flimsy. It can tear. So there's definitely a time and a place for this paper. And I'll point out some examples of when I use a thinner paper like this. But if you're wanting to really get the most out of your money, I would kind of steer away from this. Now it is nice to be able to just run to Hobby Lobby, grab some and test out, maybe test out some of these different techniques I'm going to show you um, to figure out if you want to incorporate pattern paper into your journaling. But this is an option here. Um, and then these are some better options here. Some of my favorites are from um, Crepe Paper and from Felicity Jane. The Crepe Paper ones come in these like six by eights. They also have a 12 by 12. I like the six by eight size um, because oftentimes the patterns are a lot more uh, like smaller than 12 by 12 pattern papers. And the six by eight is a perfect fit for like a full page tip in in a standard journaling Bible. Um, and also gives you a pretty good size tip in um, in the illustrating Bible. Bible. So it's just a really nice convenient size. Um, the crepe paper brand, while well, yes, you get less sheets than Hobby Lobby, it's a much nicer paper. So it's much thicker paper. It oftentimes has specialty papers in it, like this one here that has the foil detail. Um, sometimes they are double sided, sometimes they're single sided. That's just going to have to be your preference. Um, single sided prints are kind of nice if you're doing like journaling tags and things like that, because then you can have your pretty front of your tag and then a blank white canvas to do your journaling or prayers or scripture writing or whatever you want on the back side. So um, the like Maggie Holmes, anything by Crate Paper are some of my um, favorites there. There's um, this one by Kaiser Craft. This is another size option. Oftentimes they'll come in six by six pads. So here you can see this is actually six and a, six and a half, but six by six versus six by eight. Again, um, Kaiser Craft has some nice quality, thicker paper. It's not quite as thick as crepe paper um, and seems to be single sided. This is carried over at By the Well for God. Again, just great, you know, patterns and things like that. And then you have your 12 by 12 options. So these are usually like the open stock papers you can find in the craft stores. I um, especially love the ones from Felicity Jane. The quality of this paper is fantastic. It is almost like a lightweight cardstock. So it's really going to hold up to making pockets pockets and tags and some of those interactive elements in your Bible journaling. Um, they do have some six by six options. Uh, I'll link those down below. They more often the times have the 12 by 12 and 12 by 12 is slightly larger than 12 by 12 because it does include a branding strip. So when I refer to branding strips, that's what this is. Usually when you buy open stock 12 by 12 papers from uh, most companies, it has a strip down here that has the company name, the paper name or the collection name, some information about the company. And then usually you get a little bonus pattern. So this little scallop down here. So when you cut this off, that's going to give you your 12 by 12. And then you have that branding strip that you can, yes, it gives you information, but functionally you can use it for um, projects and things like that. So Felicity Jane are definitely a favorite of mine. Lots
lots of floral prints. I'll talk about fussy cutting. These are great for fussy cutting out images. So if you want to cut out um, the flowers and then use them as individual die cuts, things like that, that is an option. And then you have your specialty papers. So these are usually like cardstocks or vellums. Um, this one has like some glitter detail, foiling, um, just things like that. Sometimes they're cut apart sheets. So it's a 12 by 12 sheet that has like cards. Um, you'll see squares and rectangles and things like that. That is intended to be cut apart into journaling cards and things like that. So there's just a few examples of different ways that you can purchase your pattern papers. I'll give you some resources down in the description box down below. Now let's take a look at some examples of ways that I've used pattern paper in my journaling. This can be a longer video because I have a lot of examples for you. And again, check out that playlist down below. So first off, one of the ways is customizing the inside cover of my Bibles. I've done this on several of my um, more traditional journaling Bibles like this one here. And then this one um, is my interleaved Bible. And I do have a tutorial for how I did this. Um, it's very, very simple. So I will link that down below. You can also see here, I used another piece of pattern paper to create a pocket. So um, just by creating, you know, a rectangle of paper, folding over, you, you don't even have to fold it over, just by applying adhesive on three sides gives you your pocket that then you can slide, you know, prayer cards and things like that. So you can add pockets to the pages themselves or, um, you know, on the inside covers as a place to have um, journaling spots. I've even added little envelopes or things like that. So this is just a patterned paper. Diving right in. Now, pattern paper is a great way to add interactive elements without covering up your text. I don't have an issue with covering up Bible text, but I know some people do. And so a lot of the techniques I show you, you can adapt to just be in the margin. So like this one here, this is actually hymnal paper, but you can use any pattern paper. I just tore a corner of the paper off. So like a little rect or a little triangle there. Um, use adhesive on two sides and now I have this little pocket that I can slide tag or journaling spot or something like that in. Um, if you made it smaller to just the margin space um, then you wouldn't cover any text and you would have a little you know pocket piece. Tip-ins are a great way to use um, patterned paper. So um, what I did here is I had some larger printable elements that I wanted to use for this page, but I didn't want to completely obstruct the Bible text because you can see how big these are. So all I did was layer up um, some different pattern papers like this green paper and then this pink gingham. And you can see I love to tear it so you get that raw edge. Um, adhered them together and then I just um, adhered it with a little bit of washi tape just to the bottom of the Bible page and then I have this little hinge. So now I've got some hidden journaling spots. I can still read the text and I can still have those really fun um, elements on the page without it completely obscuring the Bible text. Here's another tip-in option. This is actually a printable card, but I wanted to use it as an example of, you could do the same thing by just cutting out a rectangle of pattern paper. Again, this works better with those thicker pattern papers, but just adhering a little bit of washi to one side, and then you have a tip-in where you can add some more private journaling, have some more space to do prayer journaling and note-taking, um, and then you can add some die cuts and ephemera and stickers and things like that to the front, but use that pattern paper as your base for your tip-in. Here again is another tip-in. So this one's adhered in the gutter of the Bible page. And for this one, I took three different patterns of paper. Um, I do have a video in that playlist showing how I did this page, but just layered those different patterns, added some fun, you know, stickers and die cuts. And then now I've got a giant journaling spot and none of the text is covered up. So again, using some pattern paper there. Here's another one of those little triangle pockets. So just tearing off a triangle corner, adhering on two sides, and then I have this little um, pocket piece that I can slide tags or things in. Again, if you made it smaller, it wouldn't cover um, the text over here. I wanted to show you a variety of different things in a variety of different Bibles. So this is my interleave Bible. I know we haven't seen this one in a long time. Um, I used to use this a long time ago. I thought about getting a new one just to do watercolor in, so we'll see. But here again, you can see how I just decoupage some pattern paper to the inside of it. Um, there is a tutorial for how I did this. All I did was use matte gel medium, apply a layer of matte gel medium down onto the page, put the paper on there, add a layer of matte gel medium over the top, and then now it is secured in there and gives you that fun um, print on the inside of your Bible. 
I love using pattern papers with dies. So um, like a tag die, like one of these nesting tag dies. I have a die cutting video I will link down below if you're curious about what all you need to do that. But you could also very easily just freehand shapes or find templates on Google and then trace them onto pattern paper. But here you can see I had this really beautiful image that I had painted and drawn and I didn't want to um, obscure any of this with writing or stickers or things like that. So I just went ahead and created a little tag. That way I could do my journaling and add my title and all that. And this is a piece that you can then take away and then just have your um, image on there. Um, there's a couple different things going on here. So this, um, I wanted to do some big, bold stamping, um, but I didn't want to have any bleed through come through on this side of the page. So I just laid down a piece of um, pattern paper just with some, like an adhesive tape runner. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then did my stamping on there. And then I don't have to worry about the stamping bleeding through my Bible page. And it's like instant page. All this was was just some stamping, some pattern paper, and it's done. Over here, you can um, use, you know, tags again. I just made a little tag in a pocket. You can use pockets that are maybe some packaging that you have, or they do also have some dies. Um, this is an envelope die from Sizzix, so you could get something like this, cut it out of some plain paper or even some pattern paper and create a little element like that. Here's where I use some pattern paper on the front of my Bible. So this is the hard bound um, journaling Bible. I do have a process for this as well, so I'll link that down below. Um, and so this is just patterned paper, a little bit of paint. Um, this is one of my older Bibles, so it's it's seen some better days. <laughs> Here's another example of dealing with um, bleed through or maybe a mess up. Like maybe I had stamped something and messed it up. So I just filled in the margin with this glasses patterned paper uh, and then built up my page on top of that. And then um, it's not interacting or having any bleed through or anything like that on the back side. And then also cutting tabs. So using a tab punch, something like this, I'll link it down below, um, can cut out tabs out of the patterned paper. Like I said, lots and lots and lots of examples in a variety of Bibles for you guys. Um, here's one in my illustrating Bible. This is a recent entry. Um, we got these um, like manila styled mini uh, folders from Illustrated Faith in a couple kits ago. And so I just traced this template onto some pattern paper and created my own little um, file folders. Uh, you could just Google file folder template. I am, I think there's an Etsy shop that sells a template. I'll link that down below. Um, and then just trace it onto some pattern paper. And then now I have some private journaling spots and just creates this fun interactive element in the margin. You could do the same thing in a smaller Bible, just um, scale these down to a smaller size. Another example is um, stamping and fussy cutting. So I stamped these letters. This was an alpha from Illustrated Faith. Stamp Stamped them onto some pattern paper and then fussy cut out the letters. And then they are this, just this fun, you know, patterned alpha and created kind of my own little stickers. Speaking of fussy cutting, this is a, um, these floral pieces were actually in a 12 by 12 paper, very similar to that other floral paper that I showed you at the beginning of the video um, from Felicity Jane. And I just fussy cut out the florals. So instead of using the whole paper, I just cut out the floral images and used them kind of like a die cut piece. And then here is another example of using pattern paper with alphas. So this was actually using um, a font with my Silhouette Cameo cutting machine. That's a digital cutting machine that cuts things out for you. Um, but you could use um, dies. There's a variety of alphabet dies out there. Or you can can um, just print off a font and then trace it onto the paper and hand cut it out. So don't feel like you have to go out and buy a die cutting machine of some sort. Um, you very easily could just trace these letters um, and then cut them out yourself. And then here you've got custom letters in whatever size that you want. Uh, if you're somebody like me that loves alphabet stickers, this is a really nice cost effective way to have a variety of alphas that match whatever you're working on. And then you can size it specifically to what you need um, and have these fun, unique alpha titles in your journaling. This one here is um, paper piecing with a stamp. I do have an entire video dedicated to how I did this. Uh, I had this typewriter stamp that I stamped out on a variety of different pattern papers and then cut out 
different parts of it and then pieced it together to have this fun image. So instead of painting it in or coloring it in with markers or something like that, I'm using pattern papers. So I will link that video down below and you can check out specifically how I did that. But that's a great way to use pattern papers as well. This one here was for some journaling spots. So I just cut some little rectangles of different pattern papers and uh, I love the colors, but it's hard to print on that or to type on that or write on it. So I just use like some white acrylic paint, painted in the center of the pattern paper and then ran this through my typewriter. You could also handwrite it or something like that. Um, and then created this fun little journaling flip book here. So just by adhering washi just to the top, and then now I've got all these layers of pattern papers. So really fun pop of color, but also functional with um, journaling spots. Here's some more um, stamping with pattern papers. So I stamped this mountain stamp on a variety of different pattern papers and then fussy cut them out and layered them together to create these fun little mountains there. I will link that video um, down below as well. I think that this was a... Um, creative retreat kits video that I did. So using pattern papers with stamps, you could do that with florals, alpha open alphabets, uh, lots of different stamps that you could then stamp and fussy cut out of pattern papers. And it's an easy way to color them in and have you know some interest to that. All right, last Bible. Here is using pattern paper behind a photo. So I love to include photos in my Bible journaling. Um, I also created a little bit of a tip in here by adding just the washi to the top, but layering the photo onto some pattern paper just helps the photo kind of stand out, adds some interest to it, um, and then also gives me a functional place to do some documenting. And then down here, this was actually a cut file that I created. So if you have something like a silhouette or a Cricut or other scanning cut, I'm scaling down some of those scrapbooking cut files to a smaller size and then backing it with pattern papers gives you a nice fun element in the margin. This one here is another paper piecing. So I found a cut file that was this coffee cup, but you very easily could just Google coffee cup outline, trace it onto some different pattern papers and um, cut it out by hand. Um, this was for Felicity Jane. So I used a variety of Felicity Jane papers and then just pieced it together. And I have this little custom die cut piece that I can use on there. And just by changing up the different papers that I use changes the whole look of this piece. And I could use it in a variety of different times of the year or different entries, things like that. Here I used some packaging. I just had a glassine um, bag and I created a little journaling spot. So I wanted some more private journaling. So a piece of um, pattern paper that then I can write on the back side of, slip it into either a vellum pocket or glassine pocket as a fun pop of color, matches the rest of my spread, but is a hidden journaling spot. And it's just a little bit more fun to look at than just you know a plain piece of copy paper or cardstock. Again, cutting tags out, giving myself um, just some little elements to add stamping or titles, journaling spots. Um, this one here, I used a variety of pattern papers from Illustrated Faith, and I used a paper punch. So finding these punches that have circles, hearts, squares, all kinds of different shapes, um, I cut out a bunch of circles and then cut them in half and layered them up for this fun kind of um, fish scale design. Adhered them all to a piece of vellum, but you could just use a regular piece of paper and have this fun um, kind of tip up situation there. And again, just adds a lot of color and pattern and interest without having to have any kind of artistic skills at all. This one's using scraps. So little scraps of um, paper that I tore into strips and layered it behind my title. So maybe you have a title that you really want to add color to or bring interest to, layering up some pattern paper behind it. You can add um, pa pattern paper behind different die cut pieces. Um, maybe you have an envelope, layer some pattern paper behind that. Just a fun way to bring in some more interest. Um, also using it to ground images. So I don't like my images to look like they're just floating on the page, like this big die cut piece and envelope. So I layered some pattern paper down here so then it looks like it's got something that it's sitting on kind of like a tabletop a little bit so these are actually the branding strips that are on the bottom of those 12 by 12s I just use those um, as, as some pieces down there I love to tear edges um, or add stitching detail and that just kind of adds some fun texture to what would otherwise be a boring piece of square paper 
Again, tearing a piece of paper, this brown paper down here, gives me kind of a ground that the rest of my design is sitting on. Again, love to tear things, love wood grain papers are great um, for adding in there for things like that as well. Another grounding, so I had all these little um, images that I had stamped and colored them in and wanted to create a scene. And so I just tore a variety of different um, pattern papers and that's the, the ground that those characters are standing on um, and just kind of adds, you know, fun detail to the page. This one here was again using some dies. So I had some butterfly dies from Felicity Jane that I die cut out of some pattern paper. And then I also die cut the same thing out of vellum and then layered the vellum with the pattern paper. And then that just gives you some dimension and a fun interactive element and pops of color. Um, by layering the vellum over the pattern paper kind of mutes the pattern so it's not, you know, super obnoxious on your page um, if you have a really loud um, pattern. So let's talk about some, um, tools that you can use with your pattern papers. So this is a um, distress tool. It has little blades kind of in these notches. This is from Tonic and you can rub this on the edge of your paper and it's going to give you this like chewed up distressed look to the edge of your paper. So if you're wanting more controlled distressing, this is a great way to just add some fun texture, give it kind of a vintage look. So I love using something like this. If you don't have something like this, you could also just use the edge of your scissors. If you open up your scissors and carefully run the edge of your scissors along the edge of the paper, it will also give you that kind of chewed up look to the edges. That's a style that not everybody likes. Some people like a more clean look. I love adding texture to things and so that is a couple ways to add um, texture. Um, for distressing, I also like to distress papers. So um, maybe I want the edges to look like they are vintage and worn. So if you use something like distress ink or distress oxide ink, with a blending tool. All of these will be linked down below for you guys. Um, and just taking a little bit of ink, blending it onto the edge of your paper, then gives you this fun distressed look, almost like a burnt vintage look to the edges of your paper. So just adding a little bit of ink kind of dresses up um, your papers. Maybe you have a paper that's really, really bright colors and um, you're working in more vintage tones on your layout. You can add a little bit of distress ink to it and kind of change the whole look of the pattern paper just by doing that. So distress ink. Um, I talked about alphabet dies. These are great for, um, I love alphabet stickers, but they can get kind of pricey. So while these are an investment, these are something I can use over and over and over again with the papers in my stash, um, cutting them out of different papers. And then if you run them through a Xyron sticker maker, um, so putting them in the top here, I've used this lots on my channel, pulling it out the bottom, um, and then it adds adhesive to the backside of whatever you put through here. So then you have little customized stickers, or you can just add um, a glue stick or something like that to the back of your dies. I do have a tip Tuesday, like I said, all about die cutting, so I'll link that down below if you have questions about that. And again, um, tab punches, circle punches, those are lots of different ways um, that you can cut different shapes out of your um, patterned papers the envelope dies, tag dies. Um, you can even freehand draw shapes and then cut them out um, and use those in your projects as well. So I hope that that gives you some inspiration for different ways to use pattern papers um, in your journaling. You can also take those outside of your journaling Bible and use them for like memory decks cards. You can see here I have pattern papers that I created the base of my cards for. Um, so, you know, going into memory keeping and things like that, you can use all those same techniques for that. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for all the links to everything that I talked about, including that pattern paper playlist if you want to see the different videos where I've used pattern papers. Um, and if you have different tips and tricks um, for pattern papers, leave those down below and, and share those with the rest of us. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.